Reverb for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Uh, thanks, Madam Speaker. So I appreciate the opportunity to come back tonight and, and question the, the Minister of National Defense or the Parliamentary Secretary and follow up on a question that I asked um, on March 22nd, uh, so a number of months ago, uh, about uh, you know the fact that Ukraine is fighting for their freedom, their democracy, and even their lives, and they've asked more for more help from Canada. The Canadian Armed Forces, as I highlighted in that question to the Minister on, in, in March, is in the process of divesting many of their armoured vehicles, such as the Coyotes, the M113s, the Bison ambulances, and they're replacing them uh, with uh, the current armoured uh, combat support vehicle project. So my question to the Minister at the time was could these vehicles be, be donated to Ukraine, and if so, when? Now I'm confident having worked with the uh, Parliamentary Secretary and, and got to know the Minister well, that they, they have the answers. They've had a couple months now to dig up the answers and know this, and the fact is there's already sources in the, in the news just recently talking about the fact that the Government of Canada may be willing to donate 40 Coyote vehicles to Ukraine. This is good news, Madam Speaker. But my question is, what about the hundreds more? We have more Coyotes, we have more Lab 3s. In fact, what, one of the things that is absolutely critical to Ukraine is Bison ambulances. These are great vehicles, they're fighting a war, and I'll get into the reason why these armored vehicles are even that much more important later. So my question really is that I'm hoping the Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister will answer tonight, is just when can Ukraine expect to receive these critical vehicles that Ukraine needs as they're fighting for their lives against this Ill illegal regime or illegal invasion by President Putin? This, Madam Speaker, was highlighted again just yesterday by Ukrainian MPs that are here visiting in Canada and one that was on Power and Politics yesterday asking that specific question of why or when, she, when that member of parliament, Ukrainian member of parliament was asked, has Canada provided a response to Ukraine on when they can expect these vehicles? I was flabbergasted to watch that interview and understand, no, Ukraine is still waiting for even a response from this government on when they can expect those armored vehicles. And these are vehicles, as they rightly know, Canada's not using, and they could be there to support Ukraine and save lives. As well, Madam Speaker, ammunition. We have, and I, I do give the government credit, they've donated 155 one millimeter howitzers, artillery pieces that are critical, but they need the ammunition. Anybody watching the news knows they're going through these vehicles, uh, this ammunition at a critical pace. To just finalize the importance of this, Madam Speaker, I just read a, a, a doctor, a professor's paper earlier today talking about the famine that is going to come out of this war, the world famine and the backlog that is occurring with the blockades that the Russians are doing against Ukraine. And this is something that Canada should be doing more to, to resolve. And so I'll just quote the final paragraph from that article or that paper that I read this morning. Canada's inability or even unwillingness to be agile during this unprecedented crisis puts us into the back role of reliable nations. It is, para it, uh, it is a paralyzing combination of fear bureaucratic stagnation and a crippling lack of creativity that holds us back and forces us to watch our hard-won value system circle the drain. Hundreds of millions of people are at risk because of the Putin regime's actions. What is Canada going to do about it? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health and the Minister of Sport. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I would just start by thanking my friend and colleague for his service to this country, as well as his consistent advocacy for members of the Canadian Armed Forces, as well as for Ukraine and Ukrainians. Madam Speaker, Canada has made it very clear that we stand firmly with Ukraine in the face of this unjustified and unprovoked attack on their country. And following Russia's occupation and attempted illegal annexation of Crimea, we launched Operation Unifier in 2015. Over the last seven years, we've been working alongside Ukraine and training over 33,000 members of their security forces, training and learning valuable skills from one another. We were privileged to witness the complete transformation of Ukraine's security forces over the past several years, 
This is the force that is bravely and effectively defending itself against invading Russian forces today. We've also helped bolster Ukraine's resilience in cyberspace in conjunction with communications security establishment. We continue to work closely with our international partners and various government departments to ensure that Ukraine has what they need in order to defend their country. Canada has already committed $262 million for military aid for Ukraine since February 2022, and that includes anti-tank weapons and rockets, M777 howitzers, drone cameras, 155mm ammunition, rifles, armored utility vehicles, and satellite imagery and technology. Our military donation includes both new equipment as well as equipment from Canadian Armed Forces inventories. And I'm pleased to say that some of the military aid cover uh, coming in uh, does come from the $500 million that our government announced in the last federal budget. This is the case for the 20,000 155 millimeter artillery rounds that Minister Anand recently announced at a cost of $98 million, which will be crucial in Ukraine's current fight to defend its eastern territory. In addition, Canada has deployed two CC-130 aircraft to Europe to transport military equipment towards Ukraine. This includes equipment from Canada and our allies. These aircraft have delivered over 2 million pounds of aid so far on over 100 flights, and this work continues every single day. We can say that we are conducting an assessment of what further equipment we can buy or donate based on Ukraine's list of urgent requirements. However, we need to ensure that we're donating equipment that can be integrated with their exist existing fleet and that they can maintain during this time of war. We are focused on addressing the most pressing defense needs, which Ukraine communicates to partners and allies at forums like the Ukraine Defense Contract Group, which the Minister of National Defense will be attending on the margins of this week's uh, meeting uh, of NATO ministers of defense. As we announce further aid to Ukraine, we will continue to respond to the requests of Ukraine's government. Canada's defense minister remains in close and frequent contact with her Ukrainian counterpart on how Canada can best assist Ukraine as it fights to defend itself. Madam Speaker, I want to reassure the member opposite and Canadians that Canada will continue seeking every opportunity and every avenue to support and help Ukraine. And we'll continue to work with our international partners as well to ensure that continue uh, supporting Ukraine in effective and meaningful ways to best respond to their needs. Madam Speaker, I look forward to further discussing this issue with my friend and colleague. And once again, thank him for his service to this country. Honourable Member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Uh, Madam Speaker, first off, I'll offer my congratulations to the member Milton for his uh, promotion, in my viewpoint, to become the Parliamentary Secretary of Defence, uh, because uh, at least I guess that's why he's answering the question tonight, Madam Speaker. Look, the, the, par the Parliamentary Secretary failed to answer the question. It's the same question I asked the Minister three months ago, and it's almost the same response. I don't need the history lesson, nor does anybody in this House, nor Canadians. We can all read the news. We know what Canada is doing. But what Ukrainians need is armored vehicles. This is what they've asked for. And as we as confirmed as recently as yesterday, the government has, of this country has not even given the Ukrainians the courtesy of responding of when they can expect to get those armored vehicles. Madam Speaker, Ukraine is in peril. People's lives are in danger. Why can't Canada simply give old armored vehicles to Ukraine. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. You know, I would uh, personally never dream to second guess my colleague and his expertise in military affairs. Um, but I, I would say that uh, we are all aware uh, of how urgent the need is. And I would also reiterate how close that contact has been between our defense minister and theirs. And again, just reiterate how steadfast we are in our support of Ukraine and its people. So far, we've responded to Ukraine's requests for aid and coordination with our NATO allies. And I'm proud to say that tomorrow, Canada will be represented at the Ukraine Defence Contact Group meeting in Brussels by our Defence Minister, who will make it clear that Canada is serious about U supporting Ukraine as this conflict extends into the long term. We will continue to work with our NATO allies, international partners and various government departments to ensure Ukraine has exactly what it needs to defend itself against President Putin's unjustified attack. Madam Speaker, I would close by once again thanking my friend and con colleague for his consistent advocacy and his service to this country. Thank you, Madam Speaker.